I just bit into it like an animal. This is why you take marriage prep courses, people. Remember. Amazon's most wished for list never disappoints. They always have the most unique things and we just, we need to know for science what is actually gonna be worth buying or putting on your wish list. We did one of these already and so if you missed that one, I will link it at the end of the video so you can go check that out. It's also really fun. But today we have, it's like a random mix of stuff. Like it's all over the place. My most wish list was very most wish listing. I don't even know where to start. You know what? Yes, I do. So the first item is actually for back pain. I struggle a lot with back pain and I've been to a lot of different specialists trying to deal with some issues that had to do with like having kids and my muscles not healing the right way. It was just like, it's a whole thing. So I've tested out a bunch of different massaging products that I thought would be very interesting. Some of them work out very well and some of them are just awful, just awful. But this guy looked fun. And this is called the original back knobber. Yep, that's its name. Says it's not a toy. Please keep it away from children. I think my children would beg to differ. This looks like an awesome weapon. So this is what it looks like right here. It's like an S thing. My understanding is that you can use it to just hook around like, like this, I think. I should probably look into this more. Do you have instructions? I believe you do. Whoa, they did not skimp on the uh, light reading material. This is essentially going to treat myofascial pressure or trigger points, which I am kind of excited about because I struggle with that a lot. General use guidelines. Okay, no, travel features, no. All right, it's a ba basically a, the world's your oyster. There are so many different ways in which you can use this device. So let's give one a go. It seems this side is a little bit wider, this side is shorter. So it probably gets to more of this kind of area. See, I have always have like a knot that's like right here. Let's see if I can get it. Honestly, it works really well. I feel like I'm kind of like holding a weird hanger and you can adjust the amount of pressure, which is kind of nice. I'm trying to decide how I feel about it. I think I like this and it's like solid enough. Like it's, it's a lot heavier than I was expecting. Not heavy, but you know what I mean? Like it's not flimsy plastic. Oh my gosh, it's getting all of the Nuts. Honestly, I am not mad at this. I'm going to continue to use this and see if I find other ways. They do have a lot of um, suggested ways to use it, which I appreciate that they give a bunch of different things instead of leaving me to figure it out in frustration. Oh, there's so many fun names for it too. Infra, I mean, these are like the technical terms for them. They are fun though. Trapezius, quadratus, Lumborum, infraspinatus. That sounds like a dinosaur. I'm gonna try and do this neat one here. Latissimus dorsi. Again, is it a fish? Is it a dinosaur? Is it a muscle trigger point? All right, yep, I, I do like this. This is kind of fun. Like again, this is going to hit trigger points. So if you want it to do that and you understand the kind of, pain is not the right word. Relief, relief pain that comes with that. I really like this. I'm really glad I have it. All right, next we're gonna do some food. There are a, a couple of different things and we're gonna start with these Kit Kats, but they're not just any Kit Kats. They are Kit Kats that I have never had before. They are cheesecake flavored. These are from Japan and they have so many interesting and unique flavors. And I just, I saw this on the list and I was like, well, it has to be good. It's on everyone's wish list. So we're gonna try that out. Christopher, do you wanna try some cheesecake? Kit Kats? I don't know why that was really difficult for me to say. Cheesecake Kit Kat. The little, little mini ones. All of our Kit Kats are all red. So this, for some whatever reason, is really throwing me off. Wait, what does it smell like? You can't smell it. Kind of white chocolatey. Yeah, but there's like a cream cheese edge to it. Maybe I'm just like overthinking it. You already take a bite? Oh. <laughs> So it's just getting a lot of white chocolate. With salt. Are you tasting the salt in it? Yeah, there's some. I so rarely find a chocolate bar that hits the sweet, but also the salt. What? I know. I know. What <laughs> did you do? I just bit into it like an animal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've never seen anyone do that. <laughs> this is why you take marriage prep courses, people. I remember. You get the important things right. <laughs> How do you eat a cheese string? You pull it. Close call there. <laughs> it was really on edge there for a minute. It's I'm getting a, no cheesecake. No cheesecake, but like, am I mad that it's a white chocolate Kit Kat? I'm not. No, actually that's better than a Kit Kat. It's really good. It's really good, mm. but not cheesecake. It's not cheesecake. Wait, no, I have another one. <laughs> Chew. Well, there's winning the cup this year. You heard it here first, unless you heard it somewhere else first, but I don't think you did. You heard it here yeah, first. Heard it here. Nuge. 100 points, baby. The Nuge. That's the only one I know. Connor McDavid. End of list. One time I threw out a name, just a random name, 
And it ended up being, was it Nelson? Nielsen. It was Robert. Nielsen. It was Nielsen? Yeah. It was she very exciting. Robert Nielsen for the like four of you who know who that is. <laughs> I'm very proud of myself. Anyway, that's a whole different thing. So the next thing that we're gonna be trying is a thing that apparently is like, this is very, very popular. And I heard about it through the world of social media and it's brilliant marketing, brilliant marketing. I was just gonna say, this is a marketing triumph. This just, is popular. The right? fact that everyone's buying this just speaks to us as a society, but this is called liquid death. I know what you're thinking. That must be a cocktail of some description. It is not. It is just simply sparkling water. <laughs> but it's the called- The most extreme <laughs> sparkling water you've ever had. Murder your thirst, it says. Okay. It's um, Australian Alps water and- nope. uh, What? No, no Oh no, it's Australia. Australia. <laughs> you know the Alps in Australia. <laughs> Shush. As I said previously, Austrian Alps. <laughs> It's counterfeit liquid death. <laughs> <laughs> this is just sparkling water. It's just sparkling water. Apparently it's everywhere in the States. Everyone and their mom has liquid death all the time. There's like flavors and stuff. It's, it was so hard to get here. Apparently yeah. us can, yeah, get into it. I'm gonna save one liquid death and I'm just gonna have some of your liquid death. <laughs> liquid death. <laughs> is it so liquid deathy? Oh boy, it's um, dangerously sparkling water. Oh, this is really sparkling? Oh, it's not. Wow. You know what? It's good. It's like a smooth fizz, yeah. I guess. If I'm critiquing sparkling water, which I guess is my vocation now, <laughs> it's good. It's a good level of sparkling. Sure. You really scared me there for a minute. I thought it was like gonna be overkill <laughs> and I was like, oh no, I don't, I'm not gonna like this. If you do the, our spark, we have like the sparkling water little machine things. And I find that to be too sparkling because I'm a wimp, but this doesn't taste flat. A, a mellow sparkle, a small, <laughs> <laughs> Glittery sparkle. Honestly, it's good. I like. I get it, but like the marketing, ten out of ten. Yeah, what? good for them. But, I mean, right? Yeah. Thank you for trying my cheesecake and liquid death. My pleasure. What else we got here? If you come across anything on your most wish list, or if you come across just like perusing the most wish list, like I do, let me know some of them down below because I am genuinely curious what other people have on their list because obviously they update them all the time. So this is what I came across. Next up, I decided to get these because they looked really pretty. And I, I don't know if you know this, but I enjoy coloring with my children. I will get coloring books that you can like color in different things. I'll link some in, on my Amazon thingy. I will get them for them, but are they for them? No, they're mostly for me. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna show you. Hang on one second. Keep an eye on that kitchen for me. Future Teacher Foundation. Did Francesca come out and say hi? I hope she did. It's by the Future Teacher Foundation, but they have all of these different pictures and you can like color them in on all these like little lines and stuff. So I'll add a lot of different patterns and things like that in each of the different areas. I really like it too because it's black on the one side so it's not gonna bleed through on the other side. Anyway, this is all to say that they have like a bunch of different ones and I don't know, they're really great. So I bought some like coloring things. I have tried a whole bunch of things, but these really jumped out to me because they look really pretty. And they're like tie-dye pencil crayons. First of all, can we just appreciate like this right here? I don't know how I'm gonna like <laughs> get this to focus. But, like, can you see that? Like, look how pretty that is. This is obviously the, the blunt side. It has the other side over here, but just need to show you. And I wanna know what it looks like to color with it. Is it going to look all muddy and gross? Is it gonna come out all beautiful and multicolored? What is the deal? This is what the tips look like. Pull it together, camera. There we go. Oh gosh, I feel like I'm doing a, a makeup tutorial right now. Oh, so pigmented. Now we need to color some things. Come, come, let's go color. Oh, by the way, it like it's a, it's like a thicker pencil. Just worth noting, they feel more solid and like bigger than, you know, like a Crayola one or something. Okay, I've spun it so that we can hopefully see how these um, pencil crayons work, but I want to show you Luke's artwork. So talented. Okay, let's go onto this one that hasn't been touched. No, actually, I don't trust that that's not a, a, a magnificent piece of Luke artwork. This guy, right here, we're gonna go on him. So these are the pencils. Um, What do I want to go with? Let's go with this one. This one's fun. That's what the pencil kind of looks like in terms of how it's separated. Now it's gone blurry. You get the picture. Okay, so it's got blue, green, and purple. Also worth noting um, that it is flat on the very tip. So the tip isn't perfectly pointy, which I guess is the point because you want it to be all like multicolored. 
All right, I'm gonna zoom in so you can actually see this. And by zoom, I mean apparently that's as far in as I can go. So as you can see over here, that is what it looks like when you start coloring with it. This is my initial, because I was just like fiddling around with it. But if you use the flatness of the tip to your advantage, you get this really soft, almost like gradient effect, which is kind of cool. Let's do another one. I'm gonna choose a different color. Let's go this yellow blue. Can't tell if that's black. There might also be some green in here. I can't tell. Okay, let's go in the right in the middle. That's what it looks like. I don't know if that's my favorite one. The yellow and the blue, I'm not, mm, I don't know if that's the vibe. I don't know if that's the vibe. Let's color in here. It's really important to get the flat side. Otherwise it just looks really weird. It's interesting because it has like a little bit of everything in it. So that kind of m makes it unique and different. I think that my kids will find these to be fun because they like to layer a lot of colors and that's what this is kind of doing. It's got a little, you see little hints of yellow in there. Like this looks mostly orange, I'm gonna be honest. Like it doesn't look like a ton of other colors, but it's got little hints of the different tones in there. And I think that they will find this amusing or they'll hate it because you can't really control what color is gonna sort of show up unless you're very, very careful. What about these ones? What happens if I just go like that? I just do lines. Okay, that looks kind of cool. Kind of messy, but like, it's kind of fun. Is this good for like everyday coloring? I don't know. I don't know if it would be my go-to, but like it is kind of a, a fun little extra pizzazz thing to add to your coloring. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Ooh, this one has a lot of black in it. Hang on. I need to know what this looks like. Oh, it's not black. It's blue. Ah, like see how it's like striped like that? That's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. Okay, all right. I had to experiment with all of them. I think they're kind of fun, but you know, to each their own. All right, I just heated up my coffee. So let's go upstairs because we have a couple more. Don't look at my microwave, it's very dirty. But now we have a couple products that we need to test out upstairs. So um, come with me. All right, hi, welcome to my room. So first we have a stain treater and this is specifically targeted towards moms because if you are a mom or a dad, you know that kids, they get stuff on everything, on everything. And sometimes it's not even obvious. Like sometimes it's like grease stains and then you take it out of the dryer and all you see are like these little handprints on the side of their pants and you're like, why? So it took me all of 30 seconds to take something out of the wash and notice that it is in fact dirty. Got like a little stain right there on the pants and uh, I think there was another one, oh, down here. Any others? You know what, this, is one, this one is not too bad. Oh, no, I lied. Another little spot down there. So apparently this is not only an effective one but it doesn't have a lot of the different chemicals like it doesn't have peroxide, chlorine. It's all like biodegradable surfa surficant, for surfa surface, Tense. Surface tense? I don't know why that was really difficult. And it's safe for all of your color clothing as well. So first things first, I need to wet some of these stains. Look at that, done. Now we spray on the stuff. I guess I need to open it first. You ruined my nails, I'm gonna be so mad. Who like my nails, by the way? I did a thing on my, on my other channel in case you're interested. I'm all for protecting the packaging and preventing things from spilling out, but it feels like it's just so, so much. It's just so aggressive. There must be another way to do this. All right. I have the fabric right here. Let's spray. Do I need to shake it first? It doesn't say. I'll shake it anyway. Rub it in, it says, if necessary. I don't know if it's necessary. That's why I need to test this. Okay, now let's get this guy. Doesn't smell like anything. There's no like really aggressive scent. So I'm gonna leave this on for a little bit and then we'll wash and we will see if this has done anything with these particular stains. And here's the after. So you can see that the stain is entirely gone. Honestly, it didn't have to do it in multiple times. It came out immediately. So I've been continuing to use it. I just used some on Julia's pants as well. So stay tuned on that. I'll put some notes in the comments if the stain comes out of that as well. But like I will continue to use it. Did a good job. This next product is moldable glue glue basically. A lot of people had this on their wish list and it's supposed to fix bond, create different things. No mess, waterproof, and heat and cold resistant. So I thought this would be great to fix the many, um, you know, phone cords that I have because I am constantly breaking them, constantly. Because I go to sleep and I have headphones in, like wired ones, because I will lose an earbud, for sure. But to help me fall asleep, I always listen to like the same comedians over and over again. I go through like cycles, through like comedian eras, and I'll listen to the same one on repeat. But the problem is that I will constantly be moving around and so my phone cord will inevitably break. Or more frequently, the little, I have a, um, 
like a headphone splitter, basically. Not headphone splitter. Hold on. This guy right here, because I am one of three people that owns an Android phone and not an iPhone. You know when you just get into one system, it's like it's too hard to leave. I don't I don't need to be bothered with that. So I use this thing to help plug in all of my stuff so I can use headphones, but also like charge my phone. But because this constantly gets moved around and stuff, it's like always breaking on me. So this one's new, but I figured why not put some of this on it to help prevent future breaking. So what I need to know is once I put this on, is it gonna crack, is it gonna fall off? So it sticks permanently to a lot of surfaces. Glass, ceramic, wood, metal, plastic. This isn't like that goo, that museum goo, where you can just like put things down and then it won't move around. This is permanent. So you know, like don't, you know, put this on something that you don't want it to not move again or that you do want to move again. So they have a bunch of these little packets in different colors. So you can like choose different colors to pick from. Oh, that's fun. I'm gonna choose blue because in my head, I'm thinking then in case I lose my cord somewhere, it'll be easier for me to find it. So wise. So this is what it looks like. And I have 30 minutes basically. Oh, I thought it said powered by Tesla. It's not, it's not Tesla. Elon Musk has nothing to do with this. So I have 30 minutes to mold this into whatever I want it to be. And then it's going to set. You can use as little or as much of it as you want. So I broke off a little bit and it doesn't, it's not like super gooey or anything. And then is it dyeing my hands blue? Nope, doesn't seem to be. So usually, where it breaks is like down mirror. So my thought is I'm going to put a little bit down here. I'm gonna flatten it out. I think I used even too much. You really do get a lot for each of these like little packets. Let's see if Chris needs some. The thing is now that it's open, I'm just like, what else do I need to fix? So make sure you have all of the things that you wanna fix in advance, prepared and ready. Okay, so I'm just sticking it on there, you see that? See the little guy? My issue is that I'm going to want this, oh, I'm so itchy, okay. I'm gonna want this to look as smooth and pretty as possible. Why? Who's to say? Does it need to be? No. Do I want it to be? Yes, yes I do. So now I'm just gonna sit here, just noodle with this until it is the way that I want it to be. So I'm gonna let that set. Wait, I almost forgot. I asked Chris if he knew of any wires and he's like, yeah, the laptop one. I'm like, Yes, the laptop one. Do you wanna see how bad it is? Like, look at that. This isn't even doing anything anymore. It's doing nothing. Oh, just ripped off a piece of plastic in the process. Awesome. So um, <laughs> let's put some of this stuff on that. See if that helps my really dismal situation here. Do you see this? Yikes, that's not safe. Well. Let's um, let's fix that up, shall we? There's just so much open wire here. Goodness. Okay, I'm gonna hold, hold please. Okay, I'm gonna finish covering this and then we are gonna check in and see how well it's holding up. I, mean, I still have some work to do on it, but that's, I mean, so much better so far. Stay tuned. So the multiple glue has been in <laughs> Christopher's office here and um, it's been here for about a week. It's been holding up um, pretty well in that, you know, there aren't, frayed wires anywhere. This has been plugged in and um, has been fine. In terms of bendability, I mean, I haven't really had to bend it too much, but like, but like it is bendable without um, snapping, you can see. You know, I really like it, honestly. Like I know they come in a bunch of different options too. Like not just, you know, bright colors, but they have like white and gray and black or whatever. That's Moya style. But um, it did what it said it was gonna do. And um, I think it did a pretty good job at it. So uh, thumbs up. What have you seen on your Amazon most wish for list? I'm very curious what other people have seen and if there's anything that like jumps out to you. What should we test out next? If you missed the last one, I will link it because it's a good one. That's a great one. We test a lot of things out. And I also did a bunch of them over on my Rage Love channel. If you haven't checked that out, I mean, if you like makeup, beauty, fashion, I mean, fashion's really pushing it. I try clothes, I am not fashionable. But there's that channel in case you missed that. But I hope you guys are having a fantastic, fantastic weekend and I will see you guys all in the next one.